All that's left to be done is end this ridiculous war and return order to the Empire. Only then will everything be as it should. That includes both your pleasant academy life and the peaceful days of darling Elise and her friend the Princess. I suggest you consider carefully the choice before you. After all, every soldier must decide for himself whether a cause is worth fighting, perhaps even dying for. I look forward to hearing your answer. It's hard to argue that this war began because the noble faction went too far. But the longer it goes on, the more people are going to suffer. Am I really okay with that? If I join them, I could reduce the number of victims, be friends with Crow again, free Elise and Princess Elfin? No, this isn't that simple. Think, Rain, think! I was able to reunite with the others, but Elise and Princess Elfin are still in the Alliance's custody. What's the best thing I can do? This isn't just about me. What do all of us want to do? <laughs> Keep racking your brain like that and smoke will start coming out of your ears. <clears throat> what do you want? Hey now, no need to give me that look. I figured I was gonna find you busy thinking everything over like your life depended on it. And what do you know? I was right. How about you mind your own damn business? Don't you have better things to do with your time? I figured the glorious Azure Chevalier would be far too busy with the war to be hanging out around here. <laughs> it's tough being popular. If you joined us, I could get away with doing half the work I am now. So come on, stop freaking out about it so much and make a choice. This isn't something I can just decide by flipping a coin, Crow! And besides, it'd probably be an easier choice if... What's that in your hand, anyway? Grub, of course, your lunch. Mind if I join you? Hamburgers, fries, and onion rings, huh? I was expecting something more fancy like I had last night. Oh, that kind of food more your thing? Okay then, give me a minute while I go ask the chef to whip something up. No, this is fine. The burger looks delicious. Cool. All right, dig in. This tastes kind of different from a normal burger. Oh, no wonder. It's got whitefish in it. Yeah, they're called fish burgers. Pretty good, right? Yeah, the tartar sauce makes for an unusual extra flavoring too. This tastes amazing. I like this way more than the food I had last night, to be honest. Well, glad to hear. Guess it was worth putting my cooking skills to the test after all. Wait, you made this? Was my first time cooking in a while, too. Sharon could probably do better, though. But I wanted to give it a shot anyway. This stuff was like soul food back in Dry, where I grew up. Oh. To think, all the time we spent searching for the leader of the Imperial Liberation Front, and he was right under our noses. Crow Armbrust from the Jirai SEZ. Oh, yeah. Vita was using some weird thing of hers to let you see what was going on, wasn't she? So I guess you saw what happened there. Yeah. Jirai was that special economic zone in the Northwest you guys went to during our August field study, too. We didn't run into anything like that in the Jirai Special Economic Zone. Though, I guess that makes sense seeing as it's under the direct control of the Imperial government and not a noble. I seem to recall that it was annexed eight years ago, is that right? So you ended up going back to your old hometown then? Yeah, by pure coincidence. It's changed a lot since I was last there, so it was kind of surreal being back again. But it was nostalgic in its own way, too. It's been bugging me for a long time now. What could have made you want to join a group of terrorists like the Imperial Liberation Front? What was it that made you hate Chancellor Osborne that much? Oh, tell me, Crow. Please. I want to know what it was that made you who you are now. What kind of place Jirai was? How you lived there? and what you were doing before you entered the Academy and met Toa, Angelica, and George. 
<laughs> Where's the fun in prying into a guy's past? Save all that talk for your number one in class. Who's the lucky girl anyway? Elisa? Laura? Emma? Fee? And don't tell me it's Milliam, because, you know, it... I'm serious, Crow. I really want to know. Think of telling me your past is paying off the interest you owe in that 50 Mira. Because until I know, until we know, we won't be able to move forward. You're really serious. Crow? My past really isn't that big of a deal, you know. It's got nothing on yours, that's for sure. If you find yourself thinking that's all when I'm done, well, I warned you. So, you really want to know? Yeah. Nothing you say will change my mind. Please, tell me. <sighs> all right, you win. Like I said, it's just your run-of-the-mill sob story. Pick up any history textbook and you'll probably find a dozen others just like it. It's the kind of story that's so common no one bothers to remember it, like it never even happened. Back in those days, Jirai was known as Dry City. It was a city-state off the coast of northwest Zemuria that prospered through maritime trade with West Erebonia, North Ambria, and Remiferia. It had a population of around 150,000 people, so it wasn't exactly a big place or anything. Because of that, the surrounding nations left it alone and let us live out our days in peace. We were pretty fortunate, all things considered, until about 20 years ago. That was when the North Ambrian disaster struck, and much of the Principality of North Ambria was turned to salt. And as a result, trade on the Northwest Shore was reduced to virtually nothing. Day after day, Jirai's prosperity started to fade away. Still, it wasn't all bad. We had our fishing, our historic landmarks, our septium mines. We could make use of those to get trade going again, both to keep our state running and to help out North Ambria. In fact, the one who advocated that approach was the mayor, my grandfather. He was the last mayor Jirai City ever had. <laughs> he was a stubborn old bastard, but he had this wry sense of humor and was well loved by everyone. I lost my mom and dad early, so he was also my only living relative. <laughs> he taught me just about everything a guy could know. He was like a mom, dad, and your old master rolled into one, I guess. Anyway, fast forward to 10 years ago. Out of nowhere, we received this proposal from the Erebonian government. They said they wanted to extend a railway line from Heimdall all the way to Jirai. We relied on the sea for trade before, but there wasn't any reason to believe we couldn't benefit from being connected to Heimdall by rail. The proposal drew overwhelming support from the city's council, and as a result, my grandfather was forced to accept. Within a year, the city had all of its old life back and then some. The streets were more bustling than ever. But keep in mind, this was the result of huge amounts of imperial capital flowing into the city. Land and buildings we once treasured were bought up left and right. Everything became a target for investment. People only cared about making money. Something similar supposedly happened in Crossbell too, but unlike there, no opposition existed in Jirai. My grandfather sensed something was off, and he tried what he could to get the situation under control. Then one day, someone blew up the railway line leading to Jirai. Everyone demanded that it be repaired as quickly as possible. Everyone except the imperial government. Instead, they panned our national security arrangements for being insufficient and threatened to withdraw all imperial capital. The city was left in an uproar like we'd never seen. Shares plummeted, and with no one able to ascertain the culprit's identity, chaos reigned. That was when he showed up. Chancellor Gilead Osborne, in his third year as representative of the imperial government, personally came to Jirai. We then received a second proposal. The restoration of the railway and its future security will be seen to by the imperial army. In return for our continued assistance and safekeeping, Jirai will come under the wing of our glorious empire and attain even greater prosperity as a special economic zone. The timing was too good to be true, really. Realizing this, my grandfather staunchly opposed the idea. He tried everything he could to convince the city's council to reject the offer. Unfortunately, once you taste the sweet fruit of prosperity, it's hard to want to go back. The council, made up of influential merchants and all their greed, 
jumped at the offer. And tempted by the elimination of customs, together with the tax breaks from being an SEZ, many of the citizens did too. And during all that, they'd conveniently found a suspect behind the railway incident, my grandfather. He loved Jirai more than anyone, and up till then, its people loved him too. And yet, virtually overnight, he found himself facing the wrath of both the city's council and the citizens alike. Left with no choice, he resigned from his position as mayor, and Jirai formally became part of the empire. Both of these things happened on the same exact day. That was eight years ago. Naturally, everyone knew my grandfather wasn't the one who did it. They knew who was really responsible. They just turned a blind eye to the truth. See, I warned you. Just your run-of-the-mill sob story. I don't know what to say, Crow. Uh, what happened to him after that? Your grandfather. One day, he just up and died. <sighs> Once he resigned, the whole affair with the railway getting blown up was all but forgotten. He lived comfortably in retirement for about half a year, fell ill, and that was that. He just lost the will to go on, I guess. Like I said, he was the only family I had. I mean, I had plenty of friends even then, but I chose to leave it all behind. I was 13 at the time. I wandered the land, doing whatever I had to to get by. That was when I met old Cayenne, who happily indulged my hatred for the Chancellor. And with his financial backing, I went out with the goal to find others who were just like me. That was the beginning of the Imperial Liberation Front. Gideon, Scarlet, and Vulcan were among those I recruited. I had also met Vita then. I only knew her as the woman who had often come to see Kayan. She guided me to a place below the city of Ordis, and there slept the Azure Knight Ordeen. One after another, I overcame the same trials you did with your friends, but alone. And once I'd proven myself worthy, Ordeen accepted me as his Awakener. That was three years ago. I was 16. My preparations complete, I concealed my background and enrolled in a military academy near the capital. Everything I did, I did for the sole purpose of taking the Chancellor's head. Come on now, what's with the face? You look sadder about all this than I do. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I swear. I'm not trying to tell you the Chancellor was evil or anything. What? Still, there's no denying that he managed to outwit my grandfather. And he may have lost, but Pops always loved a good gamble. It's thanks to him that I'm pretty good at chess, card games, that kind of stuff. I'd say it's fairly normal for a student to want to avenge his master's defeat, wouldn't you? Maybe. At the end of the day, there's no denying this country has problems and the Chancellor's methods were making them worse. I studied those problems, worked out how to use the situation to my advantage, and then won the game with an all-or-nothing gamble. But when you think of how peaceful Jirai is now, I'd say I've got a duty to clear up the mess left behind by my game too, which means ending this war and restoring peace. So it's only when that's done that my game is truly over. I don't want whatever your decision is to be influenced by my past. Like Rufus said, you need to think long and hard about what it is you're fighting for. For you, more than anyone else. Yeah, but Crow... Anyway, I think I've stuck around here for long enough. You're gonna be treated as a visitor. Well, sort of. It's about time for the higher-ups to head back to Heimdall, so go ahead and pass the time however you want. However I want? What else can I even do here? There'll be no guards outside your room, so if you want to try and escape, be my guest. Just keep in mind that some members of Ouroboros and Zephyr are on board too. Not to mention me, Scarlet, and Vulcan. So if you're up for a gamble of your own, 
get ready to take all of us on. Sounds fun. Oh yeah, one more thing. There's this real cute visitor in the guest of honor's room on the second floor. I think she'd perk right up if she saw you. So why not go pay her a visit? Just don't go making your girl jealous, okay? <laughs> <laughs>